Hey everybody, it's Pierre and welcome back to another My Hero Academia CCG Wednesday Weekly. And of course, I'm not alone this week. I am joined by Linoko. How are you doing today? Doing alright yourself? I'm doing pretty okay. Uh, so Linoko is a huge pillar of the community, you know, hosting the Thursday throwdowns every single week, getting you guys to get that gameplay to playtest anything that you want to do. Um, but Linoko, if, if you want to tell the people, you know, what you're on about and, and uh, your involvement with community, uh, I'll give you a stage for a second. Yeah, of course. Um, as I said, my name is Linoko. Everyone uh, around here, though, calls me Guile as well. Um, yeah, I do what I can to help out. That's the correct answer there for, <laughs> for anyone around here. Um, rules questions, if somebody needs help with the judging of the tournaments or needs someone to commentate or even just putting on the tournament just so people can get some games in. Like, I, I definitely want to be the person that you think of when... You're like, hey, I need help with X thing going on with anything in MHA, CCG. Uh, I try to be there to be at least, you know, maybe not number one, but like two or three on the list. So <laughs> I, I see you all over the map when it comes to assisting the community. It is ever much appreciated. For those of you who are new to the pre-show, of course, we have Wednesday weeklies every single week on the MHA Discord. If you guys are not participating in those already, I definitely recommend that you guys go check it out at discord.gg slash Jasco? Yeah, it's Jasco. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but of course, you get to participate, and the pre show is where we have a little bit of a segment to talk to you guys about the new things coming this week, about the meta breakdowns, and usually kind of a wild card segment at the end. Sometimes they're interviews, sometimes there are other little fun talks that we might be able to give further down the line. Of course, we do always start with the news segment, so let's get it kicked off. I know organized play is something that people have been talking about for a while. We made the massive announcement about a month ago of the quarter million prize pool and how can people start participating. And we're finally happy to announce that the first provisional showdown will be February 26th. This will be a webcam tournament as well. So if you guys are worried about which, uh, which uh, side of the continent is gonna land on, there's no issues there. Get yourself a webcam, get yourself a set up, get your cards ready to play where we kick off organized play at the end of February. And I'm very excited for this. I'm beyond hyped for it. I, I'm just been waiting for a big showcase for people to really bring out their best tech. Uh, finally, maybe gotta get to see some Kirishima breakers that people have been hiding. And um, it's it's going to be an absolutely fantastic time. Either if you're playing it, if you're watching it, either one of the ways, it's going to be absolutely hype. Yeah, exactly. And I'm exactly with you on that one. I think, you know, what these weeklies provide, not only the ones that happen with the uh, MHA Discord, but of course there's the ones with PPG and Carta Magica and any locals that might be participating that we don't know about yet, um, is that a lot of players have been trying out different things. You know, we've seen the meta shift time and time again. And while there are those Karishimas hanging about there, you know, we see the rise of Asuis. Uh, even just this weekend where we saw that three had make it into the PPG top eight, uh, they both got knocked out in the semifinals to reach out for a, a finals that had no creation you know so i'm excited to see this where players have been testing out and trying to see what works in these wednesdays weekly and finally taking it to the first scene of organized play and really seeing okay now that we have you know organized play on the line and we can see how players are buckled down practiced and ready to take on the format where they take it on so super super hyped for it yeah and, and i definitely think that that's going to be your first tell of how the meta is going to shift mm -hmm. in the next coming coming while at least until crimson rampage comes out because this is going to be the, the spot where everyone is going to pull out all the stops. And if you're not ready for it, you will be left in the dust. Yeah, 100%. So these webcam weeklies are definitely the place that you guys want to get in there. Uh, even the Thursday throwdowns, definitely get in there, play test, get your trying on. Because not only there's provisional showdowns, but there's also going to be the regionals as well. And all of those will culminate into the nationals at the end. So you guys definitely want to be ready for that. You guys want to get your grind in. Now, moving on from the provisional showdown, we, of course, the DLC is not legal, guys. Uh, if you guys want to use the DLC cards, there are some fantastic cards in there uh, featuring All Might, Ida, Asui, and Ochako, but of course, they can be used in any bevy of decks. There's a lot of spread in terms of the symbols, so definitely go pick up the DLC if you guys don't have access to them. They have access to a great suite of cards that can definitely power up your decks. Already upgraded my deck. I uh, dropped one of those cards into Mineta, and it's fantastic <laughs> yeah the, As I'm probably a, the only Mineta player that exists no. <laughs> <laughs> I am very I, I, I like the Asui card pool a lot so it, it definitely added in some spice to my deck looking to see what I can throw into my Shoto deck which like hey Shoto did well this past weekend I've been telling people the deck can do stuff <laughs> <laughs> 
But of course, guys, pick up the DLCs. Uh, definitely ask your local game stores if they've got them in stock. Moving on, of course, we have the community calendar. Of course, we post this every Sunday. So if you guys don't already follow the MHA CCG Facebook page, I definitely recommend you guys do. Every Sunday, we post this community calendar onto there so you guys know every event that's happening throughout the week so you guys are ready for them. Of course, we are about midweek now in our webcam weekly, so we have uh, we just finished off with the Card of Magica webcam on Tuesdays, if that date works out better for you guys. And of course, we had the streams of the Tam Talks as well as Market Mondays with Slim Gems that we had earlier on today. That's a great way to be able to consume some MHA content if you guys are looking for ways to diversify the way that you interact with the game. Uh, the Tam Talks are amazing. Uh, the Market Talks are fantastic, so definitely go check those out. Moving on to the second half of the week, of course, we still have the Learn to Plays with Tony too. You guys definitely want to go check that out if you guys want to level up your game not only will tony be able to give you the ins and outs about how he goes to attack a format but how he deck builds and the kind of things you have to account for and i i, I definitely try and tune in as much as i can just because there is so much that goes on to deck building in this card game it's I, it, when we compare it to other card games i think like effects you know okay this card does this this card does that but then we have to go off and think about um the block modifiers and the checks and the difficulty and like there's so many aspects that I know I still don't consider when I'm looking at building a deck. <laughs> yep, and even even just something as simple as ratios, just knowing how many throws and punches you're gonna need in a deck to be able to make sure that you can consistently get them off. Like mm -hmm. he breaks down every little bit of deck construction. They've been absolutely a fun time to watch. Yep, absolutely. Uh, of course, that same day, if you guys want to throw it down, Linoco here is the host of that tournament. So definitely try it out, guys. It's a great opportunity to mix it up. Use TTS to figure out what kind of strategy or archetype you want to jump into if you don't have access to cards right away and really refine your game plan before you jump into uh, getting the cards and grinding them out in these weeklies. And, and it's a good way to play all of the Spiros decks if you don't have any for GT Waves. <laughs> <laughs> that that is true that that, that is i do kind of throw that card around <laughs> Uh, and then finally wrapping it up, we do have TCG Con happening this weekend. So this is an in-person event, of course, uh, of course. Um, but PPG is hosting some MHA pods. So on Saturday, day one, eight-man pods are just going to keep on rotating. So every eight people that they get, they're going to be able to push on some pods. And you get a plus ultra pack. So it gives you guys another opportunity to pick up those phenomenal packs, which definitely help upgrade your deck. And then on day two, they have a 32-man case tournament, which is pretty sick. <laughs> case is a lot of cards. <laughs> And even just participation is three plus ultra packs, guys. So if you guys happen to be at TCG Con in Tampa, Florida this weekend, I definitely point you guys to go check it out. It should be a great time. Enjoy the con, enjoy everything that has to show, and grind out some games of MHA if you fancy getting a little bit competitive. All right. So that's a pretty light news week for us this week. So of course there's the event guys, definitely go check it out. And of course, anything that you guys want, I definitely put you guys to go check out our socials, anything relevant to the community, we try and post there as often as we can to point you guys to the right direction. So definitely go check that out. Now, moving on from the news segment, we have the meta breakdown. And we're seeing a lot of diversity. <laughs> um, oh, in man, terms, yeah. For sure. Yeah, so moving in, this was last week's uh, meta for the uh, Wednesday Weekly and a huge shift, you know, uh, I think people are trying to figure out, you know, uh, a lot of experimentation is happening. Uh, Bakugo, a character that even if it has yet to come undefeated, is seeing consistently high numbers time and time again. And I think it's one of those things where the deck is just so extremely fun to play. You know, it, it does this thing. It's very solid. It has a deep card pool because we have the rival decks. And even here, we're seeing it being as the most represented deck out of uh, any of the characters this week. Yeah, and three absolutely fantastic symbols to play on. Has a huge diversity with its card pool in and of itself. It it's kind of sad because I don't get to see as much Deku love with the same mm -hmm. way that Bakugo has been getting a lot of love there. But I think that's because a lot of people when they play at the rival deck, Bakugo does have a little bit of a higher percentage win rate in the rival decks just between the Bakugo versus Deku. So mm -hmm. a lot of people are gravitating more towards it. And with as many cards as you can have and play with him you can play him almost any style. It's all going to be high speed. It's all going to be explosive. But if you want to have a way to slow your tempo down, definitely it's in there. If you want to have a way to, you know, abuse your momentum pool, it's got a, it's got ways to do that. If you just want to go on air and just throw six attacks a turn, he's got you covered. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's we've talked about it for a couple of weeks now that uh, dichotomy between Bakugo and Midoriya where um 
Bakugo out of the box plays really well and it, it definitely has um, a straight game plan that makes it easier for players to pick up. Whereas Midoriya seems like one of those decks where you need to pick up and really uh, understand the meta to be able to use him at his full capacity, right? Because he has so many prediction mechanics based on what your opponent is playing and that could, you know, even just the same character from one symbol to another, you could see a huge disparity in the types of like low attacks they have access to or high attacks they have access to or so on and so forth. So uh, on that front, I think it's, you're very much in mind that not only does Bakugo uh, arguably win a greater percentage of time against the Midoriya deck, but the Midoriya deck has more uh, build up time. So I think it's one of those decks where the players who really commit to the character um, are really going to see it shine versus uh, Bakugo is more pick up and play. Agreed, 100%. Mm -hmm. So we do see a good, you know, just focusing primarily on the uh, overall meta at the moment. We do see some resurgence. You know, Shigaraki is a character that comes in and out, in and out. Uh, and we had a phenomenal talk with Tam last week about this, where uh, effectively Shigaraki has a phenomenal matchup against a lot of the decks that aren't sitting at what we would call top tier. You know, we, we see a lot of Jiros, a lot of uh, Kurishimas, a lot of eraser heads, which can give Shigaraki a bit of a tough time because they can kind of wall him out. They can kind of force him into an unusual position. But when we're talking about other decks, you know, when we're talking about a more diverse pool like we saw with last week's tournament, uh, Shigaraki does uh, much better. Um, he's an incredibly good rogue deck in that sense, uh, being able to punish your opponent to be... And, he, and he's the kind of character where, uh, and I love characters like these, they force you to play the game differently because yes. their effects... Uh, really warp the way that you're supposed to protect yourself. Yep. And especially with Shigaraki too, he's always going to be the one character that's going to always put you in a bad place. He's going to mm -hmm. make you have to make decisions that you don't want to make. And that does great against the more fringe decks that we've been seeing come out to these Wednesday weeklies. Mm -hmm. Whereas Karashima has a few more answers because he's able to block a lot more. Eraserhead's able just to turn off that ability and say, yeah, you can touch me, but you're not doing the extra five. And mm -hmm. Jiro can just set the deck to be like, all right, you get one attack, I'm going to block it, and then you're going to fail the next check, the next, you know, how many ever turns it goes through. Yeah, exactly. So it, it's, it's one of those that we see come in and out, and I think we're, it, it'll very much stay in that position of uh, moving in and out for uh, a great while until we see a bit of a flux and see if the meta shifts up. And maybe the first prevail showdown, uh, you know, if the top pillars of the format end up seeing a swap out, maybe Shigaraki will very comfortably sit in the top of tiers in that kind of situation. Um, but in terms of the rest of the meta, you know, we see a slew of everything. There's a lot of twos, a lot of, you know, a lot of threes, everyone playing just a roundabout of everything. And when we look at the undefeated characters, uh, we see a mixture of things that we're accustomed to, but some mixed in too, right? Of course, there's Kurishima there and Asui, which both are very comfortable sitting at the undefeated character slots. But then we see All Might and Sarah, which is amazing. I love seeing that change up here in the top bracket. Oh, and the Sarah pick is extremely fun to me because... Sarah, like Midori, is also a character that you need to know the card pool to get the most effect out of it. Mm -hmm. You need to know when to pull your once per game. That way you can go ahead and either make sure you guarantee the win or survive until the next turn. And knowing and predicting what kind of blocks that the opponent has in hand is a lot of just knowing what cards belong to what decks at the moment. Yep, exactly. So I think that kind of knowledge really rewards you. Um, and he also makes for a great pivot character, you know, like uh, even just this past weekend, we saw um, Bromley's uh, Shoto deck side into Sarah. Um, yep. Yeah, exactly. And if you think you can poise yourself against a deck where they don't have a lot of flexibility in terms of where their block modifiers lay, you can definitely take a lot of advantage at just throwing every single attack into that zone and uh, punishing the fact that their deck doesn't have a lot of flexibility defensively on that side. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, by far. And in, even if you don't know it, even if you're like a novice player, you can still use him to flood a block zone. You can just mm. say, every attack that I'm throwing is going to be high, and I hope you have enough high blocks in hand. Because yep. eventually you're going to run out. Yeah, eventually, right? Like, you have a number of cards in your hand. They can't all... I highly doubt they're all going to be high blocks. And then <laughs> you can force them into those uncomfortable positions. And yep. then finally, All Might 2 is great. I think we see a good diversity between, you know, I think All Might 2 is a favorite in terms of people trying to play an All Might deck, but we've seen so many different varieties between All Might 1, 2, uh, even True Form, seeing their uh, different placements in these tournaments. Uh, not all undefeated, but we have been seeing representation, which is awesome. I think experimentation with the character and seeing what the different ways the character can play out is uh, is really exciting. And I I'm glad to see that, uh, that here in the forefront in terms of the undefeated characters for this past week. Agreed. 
moving on from our own Wednesday weekly, of course, there were other tournaments that happened over in the past. So this past weekend, we did have PPG's 1K tournament. A huge shout out to Tam Cardwell. We had him on stream last week, taking it down with Ochako. And in second place, Christopher Bromley. So huge shout out to that, which Shoto, which I've been saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, Shoto's uh, a character you need a good pilot for. If you can get behind a show deck and you can... You can do a lot of damage with that effect of just being like, nah, I don't want you to do that. You know, any combo deck just, you know, breaks down and cries right there. Yep, He's got it, all the tools he needs. Exactly. It, it, it fills the same kind of spot as fulfilling my duty where you're rewarded for understanding how your opponent's turn is supposed to play out. And then finding the critical point in which uh, being able to prevent your opponent from getting an effect at the right time effectively either kills or totally derails their turn and now they're supposed to play in a way that the deck doesn't optimize for which is really fun about that character no definitely agreed and the fact and that mid game he can just he can just stall himself out long enough to get to mid late game where his effect is just i have a lot of cards in my discard pile <laughs> i'm swinging big numbers now yeah yeah every attack from this point i just gonna be double digits <laughs> yeah. um but in terms of the top eight breakdown um I will say uh, the Kirishima is actually three. There are three Kirishimas in the top eight, not two. Um, but then, of course, we had Yuraka, Todoroki, Shigaraki, uh, Kaminari, and Jiro. So I think that the big highlights here are Shoto, we don't see very often in top eight breakdowns. Uh, Yuraka, we've seen her do well. I think we've seen her X1 quite often in a lot of tournaments, but undefeated is a phenomenal spot. Um, and Denki is actually uh, really awesome. I was not expecting a Denki to cross out into the top eight, but I'm very happy about that. I love his card pool. Um, I think he's very explosive and you can high roll throughout the day and be able to uh, get into your opponent's face and not give them the space to breathe. I think the character can do relatively well. Yep, I uh, I got one of the Denkis. Where is it? It's over right here next to me. Um, I just built out Denki for my actual locals and I've just been playing him just because he's such a fun character because he's another character that can just throw out six attacks a turn and you know, be like, all right, well, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I might be out of gas. No, I'm not out of gas. Let's keep going. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I actually was judging for this one, too. So I got to watch most of the top eight matches. Nice. Um, they had us sitting at the tables there. And every single one of the players that made top eight were absolutely phenomenal players. They did an excellent job. Um, meta, The meta definitely is going to shift because of this 1K tournament. Mm -hmm. And I think you're going to see that people are starting to find that Karashima Breaker. You know, between Shoto, between Araka, between Denki just kind of overloading, um, Jiro just keeping control of the deck. Like, it's... This right here is going to be the first sign of pivoting towards mm -hmm. when we get to the provisional. And then when that provisional hits, it's going to be a lot, a lot of meta-changing stuff. So, for right now, it's... Now until then, it's going to be experimentation and just seeing how everything breaks down and seeing what's the new tech that beats the old tech. And then we're gonna start having that cycling meta going through. Yeah, I think, and that's exactly what I think we're trying to look for when we're talking about, you know, a, a meta game that people wanna be a part of is um, how, you know, currently there's this one target at the top, you know, this thing standing at the pillar. Well, then how do we defeat that? How do we take it in? And, you know, we look at things like irrefutable forces in nature is definitely a, something that helps a lot against things like coordinated effort and things that Krishima tends to abuse to be able to gain the amount of advantage he does. You know, so we when we look at that, it's like, okay, well, now I can start taking in these cards. And then because there is so much to target against Krishima, maybe the Krishima has pivot off into another character or into playing a different style. And then, like you were just saying, we get that rotation, we get that mishmash in, and then we see that as the players adapt and evolve, then the metagame itself does as well. And I think that's the most exciting yep. part of it. I was just seeing, okay, now that we know that, you know, this character has had, um, you know, has been positioned as one of the best characters in the game, you know, how do we change to adapt to that? Um, and like you said, you saw most things in the top eight. Uh, did, were there like any like pivotal or uh, hallmark aspects of the way that people played out in the top eight that made the creation matchup um, make more sense? Um, so there was definitely the semi-final match. Uh, one of the Karishimas really had to use the bathroom and <laughs> did not want to stop playing the game. And he, because of that, made a lot of misplays. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know if that would have, you know, changed the aspect overall of the game. But there was definitely some times where it really is coming to the point where we've gotten to... You need to be prepared for not only just the decks that you're playing, but also the state of the tournament. Mm -hmm. You know, and especially with these webcams, it's a little bit nicer because you get to play in your own room. You can have it as warm or as hot as you like it. 
you know so that's that's easing a little bit into it um but these tournaments are long especially for that 1k the 1k went almost 12 hours from start mm -hmm. to finish and it's not a race to the finish it's definitely endurance overall through and mental fatigue physical fatigue you know hunger thirst it's stuff you got to look for that's not something that's going to be able to be broken down in even one of these meta breakdowns because it's something that's all physical and psychological but it definitely something that we could have had two two karishimas one and two if somebody just took care of their time management a little better or you know asked for a bathroom break we would have gave it to them <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah no that was the really big hallmark out of that one though um for the most part everything else though they were just very good players on the top of their game they had the eye on the prize of that getting to top seed for the 400 dollars cash prize and they all played their hearts out and it was just skilled match after skilled match yeah uh absolutely i mean even just looking at this top three breakdown right like these are names that the community has known and these are people that put in the time and the effort you know you got tam in first you got uh chris bromley over in second and then you, even anthony over in third and anthony's name is about up tons of times you know like the guy just yeah. can't stop <laughs> so um definitely if you put in the grind you put in the work and like lenico was saying um definitely it's all about management guys right it's it's when you're playing your games it's not only about running your cards but Time management. How do I manage the time rounds? You know, um, tournament management. You know, make sure you have a snack. Make sure that you take care of yourself. Pace yourself. 100%. It's a marathon. They make for long days. And those are things that we're going to see when we move into provisional showdowns, into regionals, mm -hmm. um, whether it be at a webcam or whether it be IRL. They're going to be for long tournaments, and you definitely want to put yourself and prepare yourself for the the lengths of these tournaments because um, yep. those those who can uh injure and grind out and be at peak performance throughout the entirety will do more so than people who have you know very fiery explosive round one and twos but then whittle out within the further rounds of the tournament exactly exactly now moving from the ppg breakdown we have our last weekly to look here in terms of carta magica so when we look at the undefeated characters, uh, once again, another Denki, which is very nice. I do like seeing some repeat performances from <laughs> this little lightning character. Uh, Yuraka making a comeback here and Kirishima standing tall as another one of the undefeated characters. Just a great pillar of community. Like uh, Kirishima is not going anywhere, even with the meta breaking stuff for the moment, but you're going to mm. see him start dropping down. Um, and Denki and Yuraka have that explosive turn where I can't say it's a high roll on that meta call, but they can, with a good enough hand, not even the best hand that they can draw, but a good enough hand, they can close games out very quickly, very easily. And they do it a little bit more consistently than some of the other aggro characters like Tokiyami, who we've mm -hmm. been seeing not perform as well as we did, you know, two, three weeks ago or so. Um, yeah, no, that's that's a hundred percent a character which, like we saw, massive numbers in the first couple of weeks. Um, you know, representing I think the second most represented character yep. in the game, and we see him come in and out of just meta representation altogether. Uh, you know, either people are playing him in large numbers, or he doesn't really seem play. And I'm thinking we're seeing a balance. You know, them landing in the middle. It could very much be. I mean, he's you know a lot of people play him on fire, so it could be that people are pivoting into trying him in different fire characters. So you know, Bakugo could be an option on that front. Um, yep. And maybe that's why we're seeing such large representation of Baku go back to back to back. Um, but Tokiomi, 100%. And it's it's wild because you, when, when you look at the deck in terms of just theoretical, the, the deck is extremely explosive. It chains through a lot of attacks, um, but it's also able to defend itself really well. So it's, it's, it, it's interesting to see where that poise and maybe that's more of a representation of uh, where the meta currently stands and it just doesn't suit incredibly well for what Tokiomi is doing. So it's, it's yep. who knows? Because the population size was incredibly big and still yet um, the, the deck definitely has a tough time breaking those uh, those top cuts, those uh, undefeated placements. So it'll be interesting to see if the deck maybe adapts, evolves, maybe people pivot off a of fire and try him on another symbol and maybe that'll uh, enter some better results. With with the DLC out, I think Chaos becomes an actual good good call for him right now. Um, mm -hmm. he, he got he got quite a bit of love in the DLC pack, so I think that you're going to see a little bit more swapping off. I think to other symbols, and I think a lot of characters are going to do that too. Like mm -hmm. uh, with we have Ayama with three with three representation in here. That's we huge. never see Sparkles show up. Like, and again, I think it's because he's getting he's getting a couple pieces that he needed out of that DLC, and a lot of people are just sleeping on him too. 
so you had that surprise element where you pull them out and you're just like, I mean, I'm going to flip my entire board, but the next tax of 30-30. Can you deal with it? No? Okay. <laughs> I mean, my first... Uh, sorry, no, second game. Second game I was playing um, was up at Rochester when I was learning the game. Mm. And it was a like, free play Friday night tournament. And my second game was up against Aoyama. And I'm running base rival deck Bakugo. And I had no idea what was coming. It was just one hit after one hit after one hit. And I think that's a sleeper character that you're going to start seeing pop up again as more people understand how the cards work in balance with each other. And more so than a, I need to play this game fast and hard and win as fast as I can. Mm. You're going to see a lot more of these more cerebral style characters on the rise. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, and it just goes to show the evolution, right? I think in the first couple of Wednesday weeklies, especially the first couple of weeks, uh, we saw uh, a lot of players gravitate towards um, probably their favorite characters or uh, mm -hmm. things that, you know, line up to more fun strategies. Um, and definitely, I think it's one of those things that not only as the game evolves, but as the player base evolves, right? I think for a lot of players I've talked to, MHA is their first CCG. Um, so, you know, getting them into a spot where they understand the kinds of decks they like to play, the kind of play style that really works for them, and really understanding, okay, so this is how the meta looks like, this is how, you know, now that we have a couple of tournaments and we have some amazing content creators across the scope that are showcasing how the game can be played at multiple levels, understanding the depth of the game, now being able to make the decisions in terms of how do we pivot to these characters, how do we play against them, um, and we're seeing this now, you know, uh, with, like you're saying, the more cerebral characters kind of come into providence. Um, Aoyama being the most represented character, which I don't think I would have ever taken a bet on that one. Yeah, no, nope, same. <laughs> um, but the deck, the deck's extremely fun. The character's a lot of fun. You know, you, you're flipping your cards, you're unflipping your cards, um, and then when you get the unflip, you get the reactivation of any abilities that there are on the card if you need them. So um, the character lends itself really well to understanding your sequencing and being able to think two, three turns ahead because you have so many options available to you. Um, you know, and they're all indeed. powerful options too, because flip effects in this game are very much a more powerful thing because they add at a higher cost. Yeah, for a lot of decks, they often end up being once per game effects. You know, unless you have a way to recur your foundation, but a lot of decks don't actually have the ability to do that. So for Ayama to be able to start, you know, using those and then reusing them over and over and over again leans for like some incredible starting. Like you said, uh, it's very tough to defend yourself from a thirty thirty. <laughs> yeah, no, it uh, hits me every time. Um... <laughs> The other big thing I really want to take away, too, from all of these meta wrap-ups is that every single character has been played. Every single character that's been, that is out in mass. I think the only character that probably wasn't was Mount Lady. Um, and that's because she's just a little bit rare because you have to have the, a lot of the PU packs. Mm. But every single character is extremely viable and has been played to a high level in all of the tournaments that we've been seeing this week. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've seen a widespread, you know, obviously there's the ones that we typically expect in between the Krishimas and the Jiros and all that. But like you said, like Ochako, Denki making uh, showcasings here. Um, we have Shigaraki, which comes in and out. We have Shoto making in and out appearances. And then even on our own, uh, we have Sero and All Might. So a widespread, and, it, and they all play very differently, right? It's not like we're seeing the yes. same kind of character over and over and over again, where, you know, we see delineate a little bit of differences. Um, but it's very much just variety in strategy as much as variety in characters which has been amazing agreed and there's very few games that are out there that i can think of that every single card and every single character is viable at a competitive level mm -hmm. so it just goes to show you how even though we all like to complain about karashima i'm one of them <laughs> i don't like karashima either no one likes karashima it's fine but Every single character that is out there and every single card is viable enough and ready to take down that pillar that is the top Karashima. Yep, absolutely. Um, I think, uh, and it's a very skill intense thing. I think the game is very rewarding mm -hmm. in terms of how much time, the more time you put into it, um, the more you're going to get out of it. And there's multiple aspects to that. And every time I, I listen to one of Tam's, like, Tam talks, like it, or even uh, this past weekend, I was listening to, um, or yesterday, I think, I was listening to uh, Bromley, who streams unfun stuff on Twitch. You guys should definitely go check him out if you don't. I'm talking about, you know, the different aspects of the game and deck building and all that. Um, and it's just understanding, like, Earth has, like, no low blocks, you know? And that's something that you understand once you start uh, looking into the card pool and understanding, um, you know, the kind of strengths and weaknesses that every symbol has. You know, that's that's something that you yeah. can definitely grow. And the more you understand that, the more you can go prepared into a matchup and the better you can sequence your attacks to understand that my opponent's only going to be able to block 
X, Y, Z based on the things that he's seen and I, that I know is available to him. Um, yep. So on that front, card knowledge, huge. Um, and something that grows the more you play. Um, sequencing, massive. The more you play your deck, the more you understand where its strengths and weaknesses lie against other characters. So it is a very, it is an incredibly rewarding game on that front in terms of the more time you put into it, the more you're going to be pull, to be able to pull out of it in terms of uh, uh, success, for sure. Oh, absolutely agreed. Yep, this is definitely the, the, the game that's going to be the more you put in, the more you're going to get out. And the mm. more time that you can put into it, the better you're going to do. And even with, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. You know, I, I've seen people on uh, one of my friends who lives down in the city. He will just take like a symbol on the bus route between him, where he lives and where he works. And it's an hour commute. And he just goes through a symbol of cards every every time he's on the bus and just tries to memorize what cards they are, what their blocks are, and like that that's all he does he just memorizes where all the shield blocks are for each of the symbols because he feels that that is his specific like weakness mm. and even just doing something as simple as that is going to get you better in every meta that we have not not this week not this month but the entirety of the game in and of itself yep absolutely